This is College Physics Second Edition Chapter 9, Statics and Torque. We will be describing torque and equilibrium states. Here we have a hockey stick with two forces acting in opposite directions at the same location on the stick. The end result is a net, res net force of zero which means there is no for net forces acting on the stick, which is defined as an equilibrium state. Now, in this situation, we can have two forces that are identical acting in two different locations. And because they're acting in two different locations, the net result is a rotation. So this situation is not in equilibrium because just because the forces are equivalent, when we look at their behavior against a pivot point, we see the net result is a rotation. So this is not in equilibrium because our object is rotating. So what is happening? Where what we observe will depend on where the on where the rotation axis is. If the rotation axis is here, we apply a force there, this thing's going to swing this direction. But if we choose to have a pivot point higher on the stick, exact same force acting, the resulting motion will be a clockwise rotation. So Clearly, there is a difference in behavior for a, the same force, depending on where the rotash, rotation axis is located and the distance from the rotation axis. And thirdly, we have angle information that must be taken into account. We represent torque as the Greek letter tau. This distance r is the distance from the pivot point to this force that you're applying. So if we apply this force at that location from the pivot point. Now this notation here is cross product. Cross product is a math shortcut saying we are multiplying perpendicular pieces of the two vectors. That's all that means, which explains why we end up using this. So here we have distance from lever arm that we apply this force. This angle is angle between the two vectors, angle between the lever arm vector and the force vector. I chose a Psi as a mental note to go back and look and see what angle you really need. The reason why I'm not doing that is because in angles like this, usually Seta represents the angle of a hill or something, in the, which is default. I wanted to use Psi as a visual reminder to look and see what the angle between the lever arm and the force is. So, so lever arm, A is right here, force applied is right there, which makes the angle right here, and it's 90 degrees. Okay, just like this one, so lever arm is here, force is there, which again is a psi of 90 degrees. So the hill itself makes no difference. All right, now, understanding what we're looking at. So this is a function of sine, which means when the two forces are 90 degrees from each other, we get maximums. When they are parallel, they get 
0 because the sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 0 degrees is 0. So when the two forces are running parallel, we get no torque. Another way to say that is rotation cannot occur. Okay, so let's go with no torque. So no torque means we need this scenario. And the situations that give us a zero degree scenario will be, looks like there's only one of them. This will be the no torque because our psi equals zero. They're running parallel. So that's our no torque one. Okay, maximum torque. Now, some of you may be taking the MCAT and when you do maximum and minimums or ranking, it is always number line rules, which means negative one is less than zero. So knowing that, and we're gonna use traditional coordinates. So that's X, Y, so that's X, that's Y. And our thetas run counterclockwise. So under, when we're doing this maximum torque, we need to know number line rules because A is different than D in number line rules. Okay. Okay. Now, that being said, we want maximums, which means same amount of force. If all the forces are identical, that means what we're really looking at is lever arm. So, which one of these scenarios gives us the greatest lever arm? And that would be, do, 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 do. Well, let's see, A, D, B, E, F give us all long lever arms. Remember that gives us a torque of zero, so that's out. C, it's the same force, but small lever arm, which means that's out. That's not gonna be a max. So we need maximum distance and a sine of theta of one. So we're left with, well, E is out because look at this angle. This angle is less than 90, so that's out. Now we're left with B, A, and D. Well, almost, look at this. That vector is smaller with the same lever arm, which means it's a smaller torque. So now we're stuck between A and D. D. Now, this is where number line rules work, and the idea is always traditional coordinate directions. So, if we do an order matters, it's always lever arm to force. Okay, so if lever arm is here, force is over there. Let's redraw it. Now, one of the nice things about vectors, which might make this a little more clear, is that vectors can be moved anywhere as long as they're the same length. So this vector can be slid up to here. This vector can be slid down to here, which will make it a little more clear. So if we go R to F clockwise, that means we go here This is positive 90. Here, we get negative 90. And that's where the difference lies for your MCAT questions. So, A will give you larger than D because of direction. The magnitudes are identical, but it's the direction that we're worried about. A produces a direction going in the positive direction D will prove something in the negative direction, which is how we're defining maximum according to number line rules. Even though the torque of A's absolute magnitude is equivalent to the torque of D in magnitude. Here's an example of statics. So statics means all of the torques are equal. Remember, it's not a force question. This is a torque question. It turns out,
torques, we treat just like Newton's law. So, sum of the torques in statics equals zero. So zero equals all the torques going counterclockwise minus all the torques going clockwise. Okay. Now this is a seesaw situation, which means we have masses, we're given masses, we are given distances from the fulcrum, and because this is a horizontal situation and masses are sitting on something, that means the forces are weights. So the clockwise torque will be given, or counterclockwise, now, the way to determine clockwise versus counter is you, you look at each mass as if it were alone and see what direction things would rotate. So, let's look at mass 1. Mass 1 pushes down, which means this moves this direction, which is counterclockwise. So, the counterclockwise is torque from kid 1. This one, if he was alone, is pushing this way, which means he's pushing clockwise. So then mass kid, mass two is clockwise, and that's the only two torques in this situation. Now also notice angles. Because we're doing seesaws, that means the seesaws are going to be perfectly horizontal until otherwise stated. And the weight is always straight down towards the center of the earth, which means our two psi's are going to be 90 degrees. So we're getting maximum torque at that instant. All right, so let's fill stuff, stuff in. So it's distance one, force one is weight one, minus distance two, weight two. Okay. Now, balance we took care of the fact that we said zero. That means not moving. We have our two, two torque groupings. Remember, the torque grouping is not the same as the torque direction. We'll talk about the torque vector direction in a little bit. And here we have the two torques in setup. So we are interested in the smaller child. Okay, looking at mass two is this one. All right. We want to know where kid 2 sits, so we're going to solve algebraically for distance of child 2, which turns it into distance 1, weight 1 over weight 2 equals distance 2. Now weight is mass gravity, so you end up with R1 mass 1 gravity over mass Two gravity equals distance two, but notice gravity is in both, so we can get it rid of it, which makes distance two is distance one mass one over mass two. Now this only works because we were using gravitational force only. That's why gravity could be removed, and it ends up being 1.2 meters times 35 kilograms divided by mass 2 of 42 kilograms. Now, when we saw this, we knew some reasoning. For example, if a smaller kid and we have a larger kid. From experience, we already know that the larger kid must have a smaller distance from the fulcrum than the small child to balance. So we already know what we're looking for. When we have an issue and we know the answer range, and you realize you're not in the answer range, that's a red flag, go back and look for something that was missing or a sign that was wrong. 